Thank you. I'm John Elford. I'm the senior pastor at University. <clears throat> excuse me, University. It's cold and mm-hmm. been sitting for a while. Right. University United Methodist Church here in Austin, Texas. And I'm speaking in favor of House Bill 1703. Um, I don't. Again, I don't want to go back over a lot of the testimony that's that's already been given. Uh, but I do want you to know that there are churches that are opposed to the death penalty. The United Methodist Church has been opposed to the death penalty since the year of my birth, 1956, and has supported that in several measures over the last almost 60 years. Mr. Elford, you also are listed here as. T-C-A-D-P. Yes. Is that correct as well? Yes, that is. Okay. Yeah. What does that stand for? Texas Coalition Against the Death Penalty. All right. Thank you. Please proceed. As a pastor, uh, what ultimately drives me to oppose the death penalty is the example of Jesus. And I appreciate the references to the Apostle Paul, but I do try to follow Jesus. And he taught me not to return evil for evil, to love my enemies. And his dying words were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But I also want to come I also come to you today as a murder victim family member. On June 7th, 1993, my wife's cousin, Carrie Cruz, and her friend, Jesus Garza, were br- brutally murdered in Denton, Texas. Carrie was a beautiful young woman. She was 17 years old at the time. She was an honor student at the high school. She was an animal rights activist. She was president of her high school chapter of Amnesty International, which ironically is opposed to the death penalty. She was a talented musician. Carrie's murderer was executed on April 11, 2007, here in Texas. One of the great myths about the death penalty that's already come up is that the execution of the murderer is the only thing that will finally give peace to the family. But when someone is on death row, their case comes up over and over again for this or that hearing. And I can tell you from personal experience, there's no peace. Every year or two, the circumstances of Carrie's death were dredged up before the family, reopening old wounds. The emotional and physical toil on her parents, who miraculously are still married to each other, was enormous. Although our family was divided on the death penalty, my guess is that if there had been a true life sentence without the possibility of parole at that time, that would have been the end of things and the family might have had some chance for peace and for healing. In our state where we have that possibility, life without parole, there really are, to me, no good arguments left for retaining the death penalty. And so I hope that you'll do what I believe is the right thing today. I hope you'll reject what I really think is politically expedient and bring House Bill 1703 to the floor with your full support. Thank you.